Hello there out there everyone, hope you're all doing well and welcome to this review for the Night of the Doctor and the special 50th anniversary episode called The Day of the Doctor. This is going to contain very mild spoilers so I'm going to warn you ahead of time if you want to st stop this video now, if you haven't seen it, stop this video and go and check out one of my others and then when you've gone and watched The Day of the Doctor... Or the night of, and the night of the doctor come back and watch this one but if you're ready for it here we go into the firstly the night of the doctor this was a special online only and also on the bbc red button mini episode that was a prequel to lead directly into the 50th anniversary episode and it finally showcases what happened to the eighth doctor played by Paul McGann, and how he finally regenerates into the mystery incarnation of the Time Lord, which I'm not going to give away just yet, even though probably some of you have already watched it. But of course, we see that a lot has changed for the Eighth Doctor since the Time War began. Even though he struggles to not be a part of it, there's a situation that happens where he is forced by the Sisterhood of Khan to finally get involved in the war and abandon his Doctor persona and become a warrior. So therefore he drinks this elixir and the War Doctor appears, played by John Hurt. And then that leads directly into the 50th anniversary special where we see three Doctors together. Of course, we see John Hurt as the War Doctor. David Tennant returns as the Tenth Doctor, who is, in my opinion, the best Doctor out of the lot of them. And then we have the current Doctor, Matt Smith, who still makes bow ties and fezzes look cool. And, of course, we also have companion Clara Oswald, played by Jenna Coleman, and a lot of other familiar faces from the Seventh Series, such as Kate... Lethbridge Stewart, who was the Brigadier's daughter, and we see the events of the Time War unfold through the War Doctor's eyes, while the Eleventh Doctor is trying to work out why there, there's a painting that leads directly into the events of the Time War. And of course, this leads on to meeting back up with the Tenth Doctor, who we have not seen since the end of time, Part 2 in 2010 before he regenerated into Matt Smith. And this picks up and we finally get to see what exactly happened between him and Queen Elizabeth I. Let's just say he was a very naughty boy, but it wasn't entirely his fault due to him thinking that she was a Zygon. When in fact it turns out to be the horse. <laughs> and it instantly that humour that the Tenth Doctor carried throughout his tenure instantly returns and it's a really nice thing to see throughout this episode or as I like to call it a movie sode and eventually a lot of things happen and therefore the the 11th doctor drop, jumps through this tear in the fabric of reality and meets up with his former self and of course they, what do they do compare sonic screwdrivers which was really funny to see, especially when um, David Tennant sees that Matt Smith's sonic screwdriver is a lot bigger and just comes out with a line of compensating, which I found really cool and really funny. And the way they bounce off each other was fantastic throughout this whole episode. Sorry, I'll keep rephrasing myself. Movie sewed. It's a much better title. I think you guys would agree out there. And of course... Jenna Coleman delivers her best performance as Clara to date, in my opinion. She's really grew on me lately as a companion. You know, it took me a while because, I will admit, I did miss Rory and Amy for a, for quite a while. And it took me a while to get used to Clara as the new companion. But she fully cements her place in this episode. And, of course, we see that Billy Piper returns, but not as Rose Tyler. She actually comes back as the moment, which is where the Doctor may destroy all Time Lords and Daleks alike. But, of course, 
This just can't be the case because I'm not going to spoil too much of this episode. And if I talk too much, I'll spoil a lot. And I don't really want to do that. But um, this leads to where the 10th Doctor and 11th Doctor go into the room where the War Doctor is about to perform the moment and press the red button that will wipe out both races. Or, so we think, but something happens due to Clara's conscience telling the Doctor to stop being this killer machine and be the Doctor once again and actually help the situation. And it ends up that Gallifrey is saved instead of being destroyed with a little help from all 13 incarnations of the Doctor. And yes, you did hear me right. All 13, we get our first look at Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor. And it goes from there to wrap it up. And we see all, both John Hurt's Doctor first leaving into his TARDIS before he, spoiler alert, re starts regenerating into the ninth Doctor, played by Christopher Eccleston, although we don't see the full regeneration. And yes, it is disappointing. We know what's going to happen next. So therefore, there's not really any point of going fully into what happens there. And then it decides to have the tenth Doctor leave in, but before he does, he asks the current Doctor, the eleventh Doctor, Matt Smith, where they're going, so he dis the 11th Doctor decides to tell him about Trenzalor, where they are buried. And, of course, David Tennant says that now infamous line one last time before he goes back into his TARDIS of, I don't want to go. And we sympathise with him as a Whovian fan base, you know, as we all still miss him playing the Doctor. But then, of course, Matt Smith's Doctor makes a joke of that by saying he always says that. And it goes from there, and the Doctor finally has a new mission and a new goal in life to go home the long way round to find his home planet of Gallifrey. And... That is where the dram dr dramatic conclusion of the movie sode ends, with all 13 Doctors stood on this cloud, with a few helped with computer-generated imagery, but it's an image a lot of fans have waited to see over the years, and it definitely delivers. So there's nothing else to give this movie sode and the prequel a full 10 out of 10. This is now my favourite episode ever of, excuse me, ever of Doctor Who. And it's really worth watching if you get the chance. And it's a perfect juncture for new fans to jump on who have probably never watched Doctor Who before. A lot of people would probably argue with me on that, but that's my opinion. And of course, what came at the end of the movie showed a prequel for the Chris, a trailer, sorry. For the Christmas special, where the 11th Doctor will meet his end, but the story never ends. And talking of stories never ending, take care and comment below and tell me what your favourite Doctor is. And just remember, the story never ends.